Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Materializing Color, Journeys with Giulio Ridolfo, edited by Jane Withers with photographs by Howard Sully and published by Fidon in collaboration with Quadrat. What dictates the color of the designed world? Who chooses the colors of a building, a sofa, a lamp or a pair of shoes? In a designed environment, superimposed with increasingly uniform branded schemes and dominated by the flat, shiny, standardized chemical shades of industrialized production, are there alternative approaches to coloring our surroundings? How can color be more sensitively attuned to the complexities of culture and locale in a global context and demonstrate an intrinsic connection to where and how we live, to community, environment, beliefs, ecology or climate? The role of the colorist is little known outside the design world, and yet color is one of the most tangible and emotionally resonant ways in which we connect to and understand our surroundings and the objects and artifacts that furnish our lives. Materializing Color aims to give insight into the approach and practice of one of the most influential colorists in the design world and to illuminate his quest to develop a richer, more resonant, more nuanced chromatic sensibility. The book was first discussed several years ago when Anders Birio, from Quadrat, the pioneering Nordic textile company with which Giulio Ridolfo has collaborated for over a decade, suggested that there was a place for a book focusing on this most important but undervalued aspect of contemporary design. At the time, literature on color was limited. That has since changed, but while these explorations attempt to decode color and create chromatic guidelines for designers to follow, Ridolfo takes a much more subjective alchemical road. Tellingly, Ridolfo himself describes his approach as homeopathic, perhaps intentionally setting it against the scientific basis of more conventional color theory. If scientific theories on color can seem dry and colorless, Ridolfo uses color and textiles to stimulate sensibilities and provoke moods, to evoke and celebrate a sense of place. His work is deeply rooted in observation, intuition, materiality, poetics and the mutability of the natural world. One of his favorite sayings is, you can't mix color in theory. The book is structured around a series of visual essays that aim to illuminate Ridolfo's idiosyncratic preoccupations and deep investigations into color. Each one focuses on a particular design assignment, revealing how acutely Ridolfo is attuned to the particular challenge and its cultural context. Instead of working in the studio or color lab, he often takes these assignments outdoors or on the road, researching color in its cultural and environmental context and constructing a narrative, a deep sense of meaning and place. Ridolfo was accompanied in these travels by the brilliant photographer Howard Sully, like Ridolfo, Sully is a keen plantsman and gardener. Ridolfo first encountered his work through Sully's collaboration with artist and filmmaker Derek Jarman on the book Derek Jarman's Garden, which records the evolution of Jarman's garden at Prospect Cottage. In these travelogues, we also encounter Ridolfo's web of friends and collaborators who feed this rich chromatic brew. But while materializing color celebrates a personal approach to color, it will hopefully inspire other creatives, arming them with the confidence and tools to find their own path to color and to advocate for a richer and more nuanced chromatic sensibility that is largely missing from the industrialized color production. Color is in a transformative phase in its long history. 
Since the advent of the digital age, the availability and accessibility of color has increased so exponentially that a computer or a phone is a sophisticated color machine capable of reproducing trillions of shades. Liberated from constraints such as material or cost, synthetic color can be applied to more or less anything. But with this liberation comes overfamiliarity, even saturation. Now that we can have color everywhere, color has become untethered from its cultural context. It has lost its roots and its meanings, and often much of its emotional power. Mastery of color has become tantalizingly elusive. In contrast to the industrialization, systematization and digitalization of color, or rather in reaction to it, Giulio Ridolfo has developed an eloquently idiosyncratic approach. The colorist's role is to breathe life into things, to find the color that makes an object or a textile resonate. In a career that spans three decades, Ridolfo has worked with leading companies in interiors, textile and furniture, where he has been responsible for coloring a stream of iconic designs, as well as in the fashion and footwear industries. But unlike consultants constructing abstract colorways, Ridolfo uses color as a medium for contextualizing design and storytelling. His approach is rooted in observation, materiality and the imagination. He assumes very different roles, a self-taught botanist capturing the mutable colors of nature, a rogue anthropologist borrowing color ambiences from fashion, pop culture and film, a semiotician decoding the language of color. The mood boards, collages and assemblages he prepares as a means to communicate the departure point for each project spin webs of deep-rooted cultural connections and ephemeral meanings that emerge from a profound curiosity and his polymathic cultural interests. Materializing color is intended to give insight into this intuitive yet rigorously grounded approach and to illuminate Ridolfo's richly contextual methodology. The book is structured as a series of visual essays. Each of these records how Ridolfo approaches a particular color challenge and shows the genesis of a palette that will go on to be translated for industrial manufacture and inform a product or textile in the designed world. This book invites the reader on a journey that, as well as decoding Ridolfo's approach, in turn carries its own narrative. It commences with a journey into his own complex origins in the northeast of Italy and the notion of color and terroir, and ends with an idiosyncratic lexicon, a window into a larger color universe. The journey is a scientific and literary trope that underscores much of Ridolfo's work. The expedition is central to the discoveries of explorers, botanists and anthropologists. Ridolfo's shamanic methodology and use of mapping processes as a means of discovery play on ideas of cultural drifting. In contrast to the immateriality of digital systems, for Ridolfo, color is firmly rooted in physicality, texture and the play of light. He argues that there is no color without material, and in a world where the smooth, saturated glow of disembodied color on screen has overtaken more nuanced shades and textures rooted in nature, we are losing connection with color. Ridolfo revels in the abundance of life. Here you understand the possibility of letting the wilderness in, remarks Giulio. It's more interesting to find order in the disorder, spontaneity, the mix of wilderness and control, the play of opposites. Such dualities, the enjoyment of spontaneity and change, the dialogue between order and chaos, or taste and vulgarity, also underlies Ridolfo's own intuitive yet highly sophisticated approach to color. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.